The last week has been very exciting. We had 25 cars at our disposal. Hatchbacks, sedans, MPVs, premium SUVs, fun to drive cars like the Cooper S and super luxurious cars like the S-Class. We had a lot of cars to choose from. Sounds quite cool, yeah? Just that, it wasn't. We dread shooting in the months of April and May. The Indian summers, they're terrible. It feels like the sun is having a blast with some of its hottest friends. It's a feeling that's very hard to imagine or maybe you can. It's that same feeling that you get when you enter a car that has been baking in the sun for hours. It's that feeling where you want to break the windshield, voluntarily take an ice bucket challenge or simply drive the car into a swimming pool. That's how dreadful Indian summers can be. And it's that very feeling that has sparked the underlying theme for this test. We are simply calling it the big AC test, aiming to find out what is the coolest car of them all. As with all our big comparison tests, if your favourite car isn't listed here, it is simply because it decided to stay out of the comparison or was unavailable in time for our testing procedure. The final list of 23 cars that you see here are the ones that lasted the entire duration of the testing procedure. For all the cars, we also tried to use neutral colours wherever possible, but some manufacturers couldn't oblige. Speaking of the procedure, this test was initially planned in Rajasthan. But with the temperature soaring beyond 45 degrees in Mumbai, we didn't have to go that far. Since it was closer to home, we also had our friends from Zen Microsystems come over to help us out with an array of sensors, gadgets and plenty of wires to record all the data and do the number crunching. Today we are doing an interesting test for the AC performance for all vehicles. To do this, we are using RaceLogic V-Box and thermocouple sensors. So these sensors will measure temperature all around the cabin. So the main points we are acquiring data are the AC vents, front passenger, rear passenger, the main cabin temperature and the main ambient temperature. So to carry out this, we have done uh, testing for almost all vehicles and the results are really interesting. With all the sensors in place, we would let every car bake in the sun until the cabin temperature hit a sweltering 50 degrees Celsius. A driver and an analyst from Zen Microsystems would then get in the car and drive for 10 minutes. With the AC temperature at the lowest setting and the blower set to the maximum speed. The car that got to the lowest temperature at the end of the run was the coolest car in our test. Furthermore, the sensors recorded the change in temperature every 10 seconds and to calculate the rate of cooling, we noted the change in temperature every two minutes. We also used a decibel meter and a cool little device called the anemometer, which respectively helped us gauge noise and wind speed when the blowers were working in full swing. To calculate how effective the circulation was in the car, we would check the difference between the temperatures at the front and the rear of the cabin. All these additional parameters were then graded as per the data collected by Zen Microsystems. Let us begin with the sedan category, which had everything from the sub 4 meter variety to the super luxurious ones. Multi zone climate control, ventilated seats, various upholstery options and colors, there are plenty that define how every car fared. While luxury cars clearly topped the charts, the entry and mid size sedans didn't fare too well. The Volkswagen Amio has a hatchback sized cabin, which gave it a slight edge over the mid size sedans, but the rate of cooling wasn't impressive and the circulation wasn't great either. The City and the Etios showed similar shortcomings, had noisy blowers and the Toyota, despite its tall price now, loses out on climate control too. The S-Class finished in a surprising third, but that is largely attributed to the size of the cabin. It recorded the lowest wind temperature, had a decent blower speed and still managed to maintain a quiet cabin. The older Camry was the winner of a similar air conditioning shootout we did a few years back and the new one finished second in the sedan category with impressive numbers but fell a little short of the Elantra. The Hyundai had impressive cooling and circulation, however the cabin was a tad loud, something that we can live with for the kind of cooling efficiency that it offers. younger sibling, the Creta, topped the charts in the utility vehicle department. 
The temperature of the air from the front AC vents dropped from a high 66.1 degrees to a cold 15.7 degrees Celsius within the first two minutes and achieved an overall cabin temperature of 28.9 degrees. The Volvo XC90 came very close and impressed us with its vent temperatures and the consistency of its three-zone climate control system. A surprising third was claimed by the Bolero that Desi AC doesn't get climate control, is noisy but has very effective cooling and circulation. Another surprise was the Toyota Innova which not only pipped smaller cars like the Brezza but also trumped similarly sized cars like the Hexa. What's the cabin temperature like? Yeah, the overall cabin temperature is around 32. So that's quite good because I, from what I can see, I think it's quite similar to... Yeah, the, uh, there's the no difference in the front. between the front row, second row yeah. and the third row. Which is quite different from what we uh, experienced in the Hexa because Hexa, there was, yes. the, the third there row was quite... Yeah, uh, difference uh, in the Yeah, row. it was quite warmer at the, at the back and much cooler at the front. And I can also notice that the winds are not, or rather the AC blower is not as uh, loud as the one in the Hexa. Yes. The Hexa, it was making it quite difficult for both of us to have a conversation at its peak yes. uh, fan speed. But I think it's much more silent here. So this is clearly the more pleasant place to be in. Yeah. And like you just said, so there was, uh, Ashish just brought to my notice. So there used to be this joke back uh, in the day of the previous generation Innova where uh, the lower variants did not shift with the rear AC winds. So the, the famous joke was when you're traveling full house, the people sitting at the front would wear a sweater, the people sitting in the middle row would roam around in a t-shirt and maybe shorts like what I'm wearing. And the person right at the back would prefer to probably sit naked. That's how <laughs> it would be in the previous Innova. This one is absolutely is, good. Yeah, absolutely good. It's maintained a more uniform temperature throughout the cabin. Yes. It's uh, quite pleasant and it's much faster than uh, what we experienced in a similarly sized Hexa. Let's see how it is in the Fortuna. Its sibling, the Fortuna, wasn't as impressive though. Both these cars use the same hardware, but this test shows how effective the design and the placement of the winds can be. Another example to this effect was the Scorpio, which failed to mimic the performance of the Bolero. The BRV came quite close to the other compact SUVs, but inconsistent circulation made it lose valuable points. For the hatchback segment, we had everything from the entry-level Quid and the Hot Hatch Mini to SUV aping hatchbacks like the KUV, the WRV and the i20 Active. In fact, the KUV and the WRV achieved the same cabin temperatures, but the large glass house and the sunroof of the WRV prevented it from maintaining consistent temperatures and rate of cooling. The Hyundai Grand i10 surprisingly wasn't as effective at cooling the cabin as the rest of the Hyundai cars. Despite having a rear vent, it didn't fare well with the circulation either. Its arch rival, the Ignis, showed similarly unimpressive results. The Mini is a hot hatch but quite cool in the cabin. With this tiny cabin, the circulation was consistent and the cooling was quick. But the fastest at cooling its own cabin was the i20 Active, earning Hyundai a hat trick. It was the only hatch to drop the cabin temperature below 30 degrees Celsius, had consistent temperatures at the front and rear and managed really cold vent temperatures too. In fact, those numbers not only helped it pip all the hatchbacks, but it also was the coolest car of the entire lot. So while it's a hatchback that came out on top in this particular test, size doesn't necessarily have to matter when it comes down to efficiently cooling a cabin. In fact, due to some logistical as well as time constraints, we were only able to put out a short video. But in case you're still wondering how each and every one of these cars fared, well, check out the description on this link below. It will take you to links to various detailed reports on each of these cars. Mm.